What's up, everybody? It's your boy Uchi, and I'm here, of course, with the homie Kai. And of course, we are back again. Once again. Oh, we got the fu we got the fusion. Okay. Yeah, you gotta switch it up. We got the we got the fusion today. All right. Well, what's up, Kai? How you feeling today? I'm okay. I'm I'm pretty good. Um, at least I was pretty good, you know, until uh, <sighs> until shit hit the trailer. Some recent news, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we, we we'll get the cat out of the bag or elephant in the room or. I don't know, uh, Toriyama's decisions out the way, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how whatever pun you want to uh, elaborate there, but um, these next few episodes will will be Kai's last because he will be he will be on virtual leave <laughs> as as we're putting it um, to to mend his voice. Um, I don't know if you want to explain it a little bit more for the people at home, but uh, that's that's pretty much as much as you need to know. There's just some shit going on with my body that's not OK and I need to rest my vocal cords. And I don't mean, you know, speak quietly as you've heard me. I mean, literally shut the fuck up. Doctor's orders. <laughs> so that's what's going down for a bit. So sorry about that. Nah, but it's all good though because health health and family definitely come first for sure but uh yeah that's 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 our our little uh heads up that for the next i, I would say up until the next chapter which is probably two episodes from now we'll have kai of course but from that point for at least six weeks he'll be out so i will be on the hunt for uh for guests one and we'll we'll see what happens from there i i do have someone that has already reached out um in in, in recent time i will say and there's always geekdom who has who has been, who been fiending to come back so we'll see we'll see what happens uh, for the future but if, if i get geeked i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna i'm gonna definitely try to get him here when you're back and healthy <laughs> so <laughs> so that way it's the three of us um but yeah definitely want to just get that out of the way so that way you guys were um fully in the know of exactly what to expect for the next several episodes after the next chapter which i believe is 77 right if i'm getting my numbers right i um, don't recall so yeah, i'm pretty sure the last one was 76 um so yeah i think the next one is 77 but either way the the next chapter uh at from this episode's recording is of course um uh was that two weeks from now so look out for that and uh that'll 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 be our first um announced absence for for one of us so <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a way to put it yeah right because i mean you know we just, listen if you know you sometimes, know exactly like life life really just kind of just comes and hits us with plenty of mixes and whatnot life so. hits you like a truck and hits you with that actually actually uh-huh yeah but fear not before we get into the uh the main subject topic material that we have for you guys for this episode this week um is actually i i, I kind of like going over the comments from like the previous episode like if there yeah. are any you know like doing that first i know like leaving it at the end is like it, it's fine you know it's something we've been doing for a lot of these episodes but for for i mean especially if there's not that many i think it's not a bad thing to do them first so there is one that i would definitely like to highlight really quick um from going off of the last uh the last episode that we did episode 26 and uh this person goes on to say the thing about the revival of the whole race so of course we're we're now going back to this theory that i brought upon the table of the the, the saiyan revival arc or the saiyan resurrection however way you want to put it so just to kind of bring you guys back up to speed if you guys are wondering what the hell are you talking about so here we go the, the the thing about the revival of the whole race is that it has a lot of problems plot wise well, welcome to Dragon Ball. So if it's right in, how can I help you? So here we go. Even though it would be lit. The extension of the Saiyans is the key point of Z and the characters of Goku and Vegeta and Broly. Their backstories have weight because they are the last of them. And that 
links the three. We have a whole universe full of Saiyans in universe six and Vegeta's current personality where he is holding himself responsible for his people's actions. Although him leading the races, race as King Vegeta in a new path would be interesting, it won't help him unlock the power Beerus is trying to teach him. Vegeta letting go of the Saiyan's past is better than just remedying the past. I would actually love the alternative where Vegeta ends up leading the universe six Saiyans at the end somehow. So that's the first part of um, their overall comment. There is a second part to this that uh, goes into something else that, uh, you know, talking points from that recent chapter that we had. And I guess, uh, well, first, Kai, do you have anything that you want to um, uh, respond to this, this uh, comment here? uh not at the moment i do i do agree with it um to some level but i'd like to see what the second part is oh well, the second part is is it's like i said it's completely unrelating oh, okay, almost okay, like okay. yeah um no nah, i mean it's true is i i mean as far as far as speculation is concerned <laughs> you know what i mean it's it's true yeah but um i don't like the idea of you know, Vegeta needing to let go of shit to unlock some power. Give this right. man his fucking W, his well-deserved everything. You know, he needs something to stop making him just take shit. I'm, I'm so tired of the Vegeta L's. I'm so tired of the memes. I'm so tired of literally all of it. Like, it, it's, it's like we said a couple episodes. Is this down to the point where the fucking voice actor is memeing on the character he's working mm -hmm. on like this is yeah. this is pathetic i'm so tired of seeing it i agree with that 100 percent for sure um but yeah i i i'm kind of on the same on the same uh level with with you on this too with like i don't feel i feel like with with the idea of the of the saints being resurrected or brought back like i feel like you know if he was to let go of the uh, the idea he wouldn't that be Vegeta. Yeah, like yeah, I mean like he is right now like and this is recent, right? This isn't I don't feel like this is something that has ever been like a plot point for Vegeta. Like he has never until this arc I want to or actually we'll go back to Moro too because he was feeling, you know, some some sort of like remorse and he was trying to like kind of pay his dues or his penance mm. towards the Namekians, you know, when they was doing the whole Moro arc. So it's like, it's only recent where we see Vegeta trying to, well, or, or yeah, physically, like visually, we're seeing him taking on some sort of like mental strain or like he's trying to take responsibility and ownership yeah. of all of this stuff that you know obviously really has nothing to do with him yeah he's he's trying to make amends for all the stuff that he's done in the past whether it was because of frieza's orders or because of, he just felt like it because he's vegeta and he can but either way like the whole thing of him needing to throw away his saiyan past and heritage and like his the the, the, the pent-up feelings that he had from all of that i feel like it just wouldn't be vegeta without all of those things because they're really what makes him the prince of saiyans and we discussed why he's still the prince of saiyans before in, in last right. episode so if you didn't hear about that please go check it out uh nice plug but at the same time hey. at the same time think about it this way right if we if we get rid of the whole vegeta's past thing you know being stuck in the saiyans being stuck in that old mindset being you know having the same pride like just to unlock a new power from Beerus, that's the same exact type of thing as saying Goku can't unlock Ultra Instinct unless he quits being a fucking dipshit and letting his guard down all the time. <laughs> right. Yeah. I can see what you're trying to say. And they haven't it, done that with Goku either. He's he's still Goku. Yeah, because honestly, it's like you can't really tell you can't really tell an idiot, hey, stop being an idiot. You can't. Be <laughs> you, you, you just can't yeah nah I, I hear that I feel that um but yeah I, I think I think the idea of him like you know if whether it's the the Saiyans of Universe 6 that get revived or whether he goes on to lead the Universe 6 Saiyans either way 
I feel like it would kind of really, it would be a really dope, I, it would be a really dope scene to see Vegeta like actually like ascend to not even just, you know, to, to, to not being just a prince anymore. Like he's the true king. That's, you know? yeah, that's, that's something that he has well earned a long time before Super even started. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, <clears throat> the next part of this, uh, they say also we should, we shouldn't forget what is Elix planning to wish? Man has 7-3 and also, or man has 7-3 and also going after the Dragon Ball. So them going to go wish Bardock is nowhere near for now. If they wanted, they could just also ask Baba to bring him back for a day to catch up for something. No, no, no. That's no, funny. No. None of that. None yeah, of that, that one day pass shit. I know. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was weird enough. We dealt with that in the Boo Saga. I mean, I know that they do a lot of like rinse repeat scenarios in dragon ball that's one of the things i'm just like eh, no thanks yeah, like i would no rather thanks. than not <laughs> oh he also says also if bardock didn't die was bestowed the power of super saiyan god and entitled yamoshi he might as well be in the universe six hiding or is he their king probably not definitely okay. not Imagine that though. Like, no, he, I don't think so. No, he can't. I don't be. think so he at all. Absolutely. No, I'm a 100% fiction. And the reason I say that, <laughs> the reason I say that is because there was, I don't remember exactly when, but at some part uh, during like the, the Universe 6 vs. 7 tournament, Kaba mentioned that Vegeta looks like their king. Facts. That's not Bardock. That is not Bardock. Unless my man got a new haircut. And imagine that would be Stop. really weird. Like, I was like, oh, Sans, you guys, you guys could just do whatever with your hair, right? Like, what's up? Like, ugh. Anyway, yeah, no, it's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, we can't forget about the wish. That is very true. 7-3 being involved. We're, we haven't seen the last 7-3. The wish, uh, the wish doesn't concern me whatsoever. But what does concern me is 7-3. Just the fact that, like, bro, they had a whole moral arc and what they kept from it was 7-3. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, 7-3 was yeah. a huge play on how Moro got even stronger than he already was. He was busted. And then he was, like, busted square. And then... Busted. I, <laughs> he was. He was busted square. Because 7-3 was giving hands to everyone. And then Moro was just like, you know what? I see you. Let me just take uh, that. Make that mine. And then I'll give hands to everyone. Right. So, <laughs> the fact that they kept 7-3 around, that's pretty crazy. Um, I like that. I like that uh, he's going to stick around because I thought that was a really cool villain. I mean, Moro was pretty tough too, but I did like the concept of 7-3, you know, stockpiling people's utilities and stuff in, in his head. That was really tough. But right. the, whole, the whole wish thing does not have me concerned because I like, I really like, first of all, I really like how Dragon Ball Super is actually all about the Dragon Balls. All these arcs. The, you know yeah. the wrong people are getting their hands on the dragon balls and that's something that i feel like most fans have to have asked themselves years ago when watching regular dragon ball or dragon ball z like how come the villains never get a wish like what would happen if frieza got his immortality what would happen if this person did this you know like anybody could wish mm. for anything but the biggest problem is that what, what was it two dragon balls they only have two to search for total not seven right they already and have the one is, and they're right. heading towards the next one you mean the last one <laughs> right the, the the last one exactly and it's like so. we already see we already see that uh I, I already forgot this man's name freaking frosted flakes looking ass <laughs> tony the tiger no. what <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so bad I, the 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 villain for this for this arc i'm just drawing a total blank right now Are you oh you're talking about uh the heaters the the dude that reminds me of Cell, you talking about that guy? No, no, no. I'm talking about who Goku and Vegeta are fighting right now. Oh, that's uh, that's uh, Granola. Yes, yeah, Granola. not villainous, but yeah. Nature yeah. Valley looking ass. Anyway. Nature Valley. Anyway, yeah, we got Doctor Nature Valley over here. He already made a wish with the with the dual balls, and we already see what it's gotten him. It's gotten him just. It's gotten him on the tip of nowhere. Like he's beating Goku and Vegeta separately, but if those two would have worked together, this man would be cooked by now. First of all. Right. Second of all, he's got some massive repercussions. This man lost a lot of his lifespan. He's not as strong as he's not as strong as he should be by a wish from the Dragon Balls, especially with some repercussions. And it's like, man, 
it's just not i'm not seeing it the whole the whole two dragon balls thing being a lot weaker having a lot more restrictions like it's just not adding up to something that i'm gonna see is gonna be detrimental to the art yeah no i i, I feel that i definitely I feel like I'm, I'm with you on the whole like I'm not worried about this wish thing either because they're gonna really have to wow me mm -hmm. in order in order to really care about what possibly could come next like I said like I, I said this on on however many episodes ago one wish that I feel like could be OD that I don't think anybody would would actually like think of is if this dude wished to like gain control of frieza somehow and he used frieza like as someone that they would have to fight and i mean i, I and i go back on saying that because i don't I, like i like because every time this chapter like a new chapter comes out they always name drop frieza like hard body like he's he's For real like, though he's been a part of this chapter without even being or this part of this arc without even like being there yet right and so everyone's under the assumption that at some point is gonna make some kind of appearance but like to what point and that and where and when does frieza make his triumphant appearance and like i feel like they're just name dropping this dude so much so and like we're gonna go out we're gonna go throughout this whole arc some all this stuff's gonna happen they're gonna finally have the kid boo look-alike on the heaters like he's gonna be the big the big bad threat because they're hyping him up they've hyped him up already and like we're gonna go all this time all these things that are happening without frieza and then like like that's probably gonna be one of the biggest swerves ever because it's like how are you gonna name drop this dude so many damn times and yet he's not even gonna be there right so it's like i don't even know like i, I just bring that 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 one percent chance of that wish happening just as a a, a thought to just bring up and talk about again because you know i really have no idea how and when frieza is going to play a part in this arc no. despite how often they name it you know man fuck all that i hate i hate that whole concept like using a wish to take control of frieza like man this this man is the emperor of the universe at least that's the title he granted himself right this All man, right. like, he has so much backstory. He has so much history with the Saiyans. It is such a well-written villain. And he had such a grandiose reappearance in Super when he went golden. And, you know, that whole that whole movie where Blue was released for the first time. For the first time, yes. excuse me. And I thought that was amazing. But at the end of the day, Dragon Ball always has that happy ever after ending. So I feel like right. they have to wow us. They have to think outside the box, like somebody on the good team gotta take a massive l majin vegeta right. blowing himself up that's surprising that's a that's a big character on the good team taking a major l of course it's got to be vegeta because yeah. who else is gonna take one that's facts but i just like that's the goku black arc like i've said it two billion times and i'll say it one more time like this man stays undefeated mm-hmm like, he really does that was the arc like dude fuck the moral arc they really pulled a black on that shit man like i was so hyped for the moral arc all over again because things were looking up things were looking interesting it looked like they lost battles once twice three times four times like they kept losing that's what i like <laughs> to see i want to see yeah. oh shit they really can't do nothing about this man what's gonna happen next nothing mm. they, they just throw the whole story away they just botch it up for what yeah for nothing I'm really not excited about it. They need to do something that's, they need to do something that they've never done before and that they would never ever consider doing and they need to print it. Yeah, simple as that. Like I, 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 like I keep saying, I really just, I, I just hope for something to wow me. Exactly. Like, you know, because we've, we've seen so much and we've seen a lot of the same and i mean we, we we we've 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 brought this up so many different times that like we just want dragon ball to be like better than how it's memed on and how people like diehard fans like hardcore fans like us like know it and have seen it be you know that how it's evolved to what it is now where it's like hella predictable and like we 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 kind of lay out some of the things that like dude i'm it, it amazes me to this day 
how we were very spot on with everything that happened in Moral. Like oh, that, yeah. during that arc, bro. Like I bro, was. We've like, been doing that. I, we've been doing that since the Black arc. When, you know, before we started this podcast, you and I were on the phone talking about this and that. What was gonna happen next? All this other stuff. Like this shit was predictable. <laughs> like you couldn't say yes. that. I, I like. I like what you just said about how we wish Dragon Ball was, you know, better than what it's memed up to be because right. it's absolutely not but i do remember a time before super when it actually was better than the fucking memes made it out to be it wasn't just a show about you know screaming sayings and all that other stuff who almost slipped it wasn't a show just about screaming <laughs> sayings it was it was more than that it was good you know it it had something meaningful to it but super is just really bringing this down yeah well yeah i mean yeah, and and speaking of bringing us down, that what a transition! What a, <laughs> what a transition, man! I'll tell you, <sighs> this next, the, the next, the next big portion of this episode, ladies and gentlemen, is that of course at this raw time, disappointment. <laughs> New York Comic Con has been happening, and they oh. had a whole Dragon Ball Super panel. No, no, no! I I would never cut you off. You know I'm not disrespectful like that. But guess what? I'm about to cut you off. You know why? Because I'm tight. This is super off topic, guys. I just need you to know. I'm so upset right now. Would you like to know why? Why? <laughs> because I'm out here in Cali, right? Mm. I used to live on the East Coast. For those who may or Same. may not know, I used to live Same. in the East Coast, and I used to love going to Comic Con. I still love going to Comic Con. Fuck, I look like, but. I, I woke up this morning and I'm scrolling through Instagram. I saw like a little, like a picture, a post a picture of something like that, right? Of someone yeah. showing that like, hey, I'm going to be at con this weekend, you know, including today. Because like I said, I woke up this morning and I saw this. Uh, this is October 7th. We're recording this, right? So I saw, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to be at Comic Con. I was like, man, you got to be fucking kidding me, bro. I was so sick. Johnny <laughs> Young Bosch, the one man I ever wanted to meet. Like, that's the last person I've been dying to meet at a con. Never saw Good him man. there before. He's finally there. Guess where I am? Not there. Oh, he's there right now? That's what I'm saying. Oh, man. Well, one day. One not day today. you get to meet him. Not, to, <laughs> not today. <laughs> not yeah, today. no, definitely not. Definitely not today. But yeah, I'm well, sorry. You started talking about con, and that got me in a whole new level of disappointment all over again. What a transition. Back to disappointment. So yes, back to the disappointment, and uh, I mean, we'll, we kind of have to gauge the people and see how they feel about it. Because to be honest, it's I said this in my reaction that this, the the Dragon Ball Super 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 Hero <laughs> official trailer just dropped, and it, I, to me, it's still a teaser, right? I the first teaser trailer that we got was literally 11 seconds long we saw goku do his hibbity hobbity usual freaking right. this is how we hype up the next whatever in toei for dragon ball right now we just see goku just hopping around doing his stance and then they show the logo right that's essentially what it was right and now we're we, we went from 11 seconds to 48 seconds so oh, big big improvement right so <laughs> we've seen we're, we're seeing a bunch of different scenes from the movie of course and there's very little to kind of go off of, but, um, you know, some things that can make for some talking points. So, like I said, not really a lot to dissect, but things to just kind of generally go over is that what is obviously believed to uh, have some type of a prominent role in this film is the fact that the Red Ribbon Army are apparently making a comeback. And... Um, just going off of some of the details from the panel today that happened um, at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. They revealed three new um, character art sheets for Dende, Bulma, and Corin. So I also said this um, in my reaction. It feels like there. this movie is, 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 is a big shout out to Dragon Ball. Yeah. And... You know, like, and it, and it really feels like that because it's like Corrin's going to be in the movie now. Like, I have no idea. And they made it a point to even shout out that Den like time has gone by. So then they, you know, they aged him. So let's hope that the next <laughs> character sheets are freaking Goten and Trunks. Okay, because I'm tired of the immortal children. I don't want them to be immortal no more. Okay, they need to 
show that age and i feel like they will and i and i really hope so because if then if they're gonna show dende with a, you know his his uh, kind of adult type look or whatever great you know bulma has her, her, her a new part in her hair great okay good for her still looks like bulma she has a yellow jumpsuit whatever right nothing crazy corin is still corin is a cat with a freaking stick the staff what do you how are you gonna differentiate you put a scarf on him or something a hat i don't know but they didn't do it <laughs> so it's corin and like it's the same right it's fine it's i'm not saying this as bad or anything like that however we do see the trailer more in motion now and you really get to see the cg freaking eye that this movie is really all about this time around and i gotta say kai i feel like we're about to gear ourselves up to watching a very long video game cutscene. Uh. Like, I mean, not, not to say that it looks bad, right? I'm just saying, like, it's not, it's not something that I'm very, uh, like, I'm like I'm used to we're seeing. Not, and that's something yeah, that, we're not thrilled about it. Yeah, it's not, it's not exciting. I guess is what I should, I should be saying. All right, you know, like obviously we're gonna see it obviously we're gonna have thoughts for it and you know i'm sure that it'll be a dragon ball movie for sure um but yeah i mean right now with the things that they've shown i mean the one hype thing from the trailer i guess we could talk about to kind of like you know balance things out here because i know i'm sure it sounds like we're really trying to rip on this shit i'm sure kai will oh i we'll absolutely get to that will I, by, by all means i have like i literally have one good thing to say about this whole movie this whole trailer and everything else i'm gonna be ripping on it now mind you i understand that it seems right it seems that they're trying to pay homage to dragon ball and you know take fans back to that time and you know hit that nostalgia spot and get people going like that and that's cool i approve of that that's fine but what you need to understand mm -hmm. on this like on this entire podcast not just not just this episode is that we you know we speak a lot of facts we like to speak yes. the truth and that's that's a fact right there boom there you have it prove it but we are also <laughs> speaking our personal opinions mine like i will not sway my opinion for nobody uchi will not sway his opinion for nobody like if if we have an initial opinion on something whether it's good or bad we're gonna throw it out there like it is if you would like to say something leave a comment or whatever you can absolutely change our minds it's happened before we just need some help with it and we need to see it in a different light we need to see like why somebody disagrees with us and if we can vibe with it and if we can, then right. that's great. And that's cool. So I'm going to be sitting here ripping on it because I'm not for any of this. Please change my mind. Well, the one good thing that you mentioned that was definitely the one good thing. Well, two good things, because I want to bring that up afterwards. Right. The one good thing that we're, we're, we're on the same wavelength for is the, the little tease at Pan. Are they going to let this baby girl go Super Saiyan right. already? Right. <laughs> like... We, we we all know what Saiyans look like when they're when they're out in the fields. The grass is green, mm -hmm. the sky is blue, all right, and the and the wind is 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 whistling. She got her wrists and, up, fists up, and the, like, uh, she got, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and even and even even though we've seen plenty of Super Saiyan one, two, three, four, Rainbow, all this over the years, when we see a brand new character that we haven't seen go unlock the form, there's still that that bit of excitement. Of course and 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 uh and glamour to it right that 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 that, that it's just the hype you know and even if it's even if it's not like a crazy reaction where you know we're seeing like a brand new form you know like if it's a character that hasn't gotten to that form yet but they're about to unlock it it's still pretty exciting and it at least gives you the Ugh, like you know like Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> you know you, you, you it's, it's exciting you know it's it's nice to see it's you're like right, okay you're right like, it is I got that feeling when Kaba, when when Vegeta fucking forced it out of him, he was beating the shit into it, and and next thing you know, I mean, Kaba whipped it out, and and that moment was dope, and it was even it was way cooler when Vegeta was like, "Now nah, this is what you want to strive for." And my man turns on the blue switch, he flexed on him for no reason. Oh my! But that was so epic. It, it was. was so cool. It was. Um, but yeah, back to the trailer, right? So. It's a little tease of a tease, I would say, because 
out of the notes that I do have in front of me, um, in reference to what the panel was going over, I guess it is confirmed that the scene that we saw Pan presumably going Super Saiyan, that's what we're going to put it, what's what I'm going to say, right? She's powering up. Piccolo's actually helping her train, right? So the role I that mean, Piccolo... Who else is going to do it? Right, exactly. I, I know, right? The, <laughs> the role that Piccolo has in this movie is literally exactly the same role that it looked like he had for her daddy, aka Gohan. Okay, and it's kind of cool. It's neat that, that that's still a thing, right? Like Piccolo is still looking after the youngins. And you know what? That's like what Piccolo is there for almost. Like he's, he was looking over the Goten and Trunks too. You know, it's like he is he is that he is that guy. He is that uncle that's just looking after everybody. So yeah. he's taking on a grandfatherly role with Pan, and that's dope to see. I love it. I can't wait to see. Hopefully, if Piccolo tries to bring out Pan's inner potential or whatever it is. And it would be sick if she did actually like that's something that I'm sure not a lot of people would expect to see. And granted, we never saw Pan go Super Saiyan in GT. Not that, not that that matters or anything like that. But you know, it would be really cool to see her go Super Saiyan watch, as she would. She would be the youngest Saiyan, bro. Watch the if army. It happens. Watch the army like capture and like beat Piccolo or some shit, and then she gets mad and then rescues him and goes Super Saiyan. Yo, right. So the other thing that I'm thinking, right, when it comes to this movie is that we see like this like, like your cliche anime rich kid who's in a car with who might be his dad or someone that's like looking after him that has some sort of power to them and the dude looks like he's like cosplaying a superhero and it looks like they're going off site somewhere i said this in my reactions like i have no, no idea where they're going but they're clearly going to some type of location for some type of event but we don't know exactly why and we don't know what's going on. However, we do know the names of the new hero alien looking dudes, Gamma 1 and Gamma 2. Okay. Shout out to the Hulk. Gamma way. All right. So we have no idea what exactly these two dudes are about to bring to the table or to the story. Right. Yeah. Like I said. Please, Gamma, <laughs> ga Gamma One with Gamma Two. No, 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 no. no. They, they gotta fuse into Ultra Gamma. They're gonna, they're just gonna fuse into Gamma Wave. They're just gonna fuse into the Hulk, like all this Gamma. Anyway, whatever, right? So, uh, they're they're there. We don't know why. We we we. Like I said, this is a teaser. It's not a trailer. They called the official trailer. This is not a, uh, an official trailer. You want an official trailer? Go watch the Broly Johns. Okay, that's a that's a trailer. Okay, that, they that got really us was hyped. yeah, that really was a trailer. Like the teaser, the trailer, every all the promotional stuff for that movie, fire. Yes, yes, they did. They like, and that's the thing, right? Like, I want to bring that up really quick because because our boy Broly is confirmed in this movie, and I'm so hype and happy for it. And that was the other thing I wanted to bring up. That was what? two things here. Yo, I'm telling you, like, check this out, ready? If you go around 126 and, oh no, I'm sorry, not 20, 126. But if you go, I want to say around the 33 second mark. And if you frame by frame it, you Broly is seen for a hot second. And I'm telling you, it's not even just me trying to go along with bullshit people are trying to spread on the internet he's really there there's a scene where where, the, where goku's like he, he he like uh kicks back or whatever um from this dust like bro he's fighting broly like broly's in this movie he's training with broly like it's happening in this freaking movie and i'm i'm ready for it see my man back which you already know what that means this movie will be the first time we get to hear johnny young bosch voice the character in a film not just a video game Oh my God! I see him. Yo, you see? You see what I mean? I'm that you. was too quick. Cause I heard you. I heard you gas it up that somebody was in there. You didn't expect that. I went back and looked again. I was like, ain't nobody there. Who the fuck? Yup. And you see a little bit of green. You see? You see that that dark undershirt that he be wearing? Man, you know why? You know why he's here? Why? Cause this is a casual movie. <laughs> and you know what? They're afraid that they're not gonna get the majority of the fans who are here for all that action all that brawl stuff 
but you know who <laughs> makes green? Hey, I, quote the man himself, myself, right there. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because you know what? Yes, Honestly sir. speaking, like this whole movie, like, man, now I got to go buy a ticket. Obviously. But here's the thing, right? I already I already, I already, already have an idea of what Broly's going to do in this movie, right? This is a teaser trailer. It's not an official trailer, right? It's a teaser trailer. It's teaser trailer number two. I can tell you what exactly what Broly is going to do in this, in this freaking movie, okay? So when you look at the trailer, you see all the different scenery that's happening, okay? When we see Goku for the first shot that he shows up in the sky is not blue it's different i'm sure mans is literally on vampa visiting broly or at or or maybe it's not vampa maybe he's no. on weiss planet he's on weiss rears with broly i was about to say that's gotta be that's gotta be like uh you know weiss or beerus's planet either that or <laughs> it could still be on king kai's planet whatever yeah, what the, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter the point is is that goku is there's gonna be a scene where like everything's happening on earth or whatever and goku's obviously not there because he's obviously doing what goku does and he's out somewhere else training at a, a third party location because that's what he does nowadays okay and the difference is that he's gonna be seen with broly and that's where that's that's how we see Broly. So I feel like I don't think Broly's gonna really have a big role here. I think he's just gonna kind of have like more of like a cameo appearance. Maybe we'll see him going back and forth with Goku for a little yeah, bit, just, right? Just enough to get that box office. Exactly, just to get that freaking fifteen dollar. Okay, like whatever the the, the <laughs> ticket, the, the price of the ticket is. But the whole point is, if they're smart and if that's the only time we're gonna see Broly in action, I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you, they better they better tease something here to set up for whenever the anime comes back or whatever happens afterwards. Because like I, I need I need to know that there has been some progress with my mans. Okay. I wanna I wanna have some hear some dialogue where it's like I was like Goku's like, oh yeah, bro, you almost got it. Like soon enough you'll be you'll be really stronger than me. Like I wanna hear some shit like that. He said that like, to everybody though. Yeah, but you know, Broly's Broly's that guy. Okay, he he is the the true strongest in the, in the universe. Okay, because Mans has no no potential. I mean, I'm sorry, no no limits to his potential, right? <laughs> Yo, so, I just went so bug out. I was like, I know you did not just say that. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no no no. He has he has all the potential. What am I saying? But 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 going back to the, the other other parts of the movie, right? Into what you were saying, which is very interesting, kind of in, in, in sparked this whole thought that I have right now, is that the whole concept of the superhero right i feel like this 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 stuck up kid he's going to do something fucked up right that's just what happens and and piccolo or somebody just like you know like you said they're gonna be involved and something's gonna happen and piccolo is gonna be protecting pan and pan is gonna learn about what a superhero is through whatever happens in this film and she's gonna look to Piccolo, and she's, they're gonna have this moment where Pan actually saves Piccolo, like just like you said. And she's gonna be like, Piccolo, like you're my superhero. And that's that's the whole theme of the movie is that, like the idea of a superhero, is not someone that is like All Might, where they have to be, <laughs> you know, big and tall and smiles everywhere, and they all constantly save the day, like just because like they fall and get hurt don't mean that they can't get back like this is gonna have that whole dynamic i feel like that's kind of the direction that we're gonna be going i mean that's at least what we can t pull from from this freaking teaser trailer number two because they you know i mean come on like they, they just kind of spat out a bunch of random scenes really uh to to kind of get people talking about it so here here's the conversation so what do you what do you say to that i agree with it I don't, I don't, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with it. It's, I can, I can see it taking that direction. It's cool. I'm not, I'm not bothered by it. I could totally see it taking that direction. If it does, great. If it doesn't, great. Um, I mean, Broly's in it, so I guess I'm here for it now, right? Facts. But Facts. other than that, I mean, uh, <laughs> what you said about All Might is funny because you know what? A whole, the whole superhero thing, like, honestly, I feel like 
All Might is the embodiment of what a superhero should be. I feel like Superman mm-hmm. is All Might gone wrong. Right. <laughs> Like anybody that knows like Superman lore, you know, this man did not care about the city. He was trying to quote unquote protect. This man was destroying everything. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I can, I can see the whole pan saving Piccolo thing. They are focusing on superhero, but they keep, they keep bringing up these two fish heads. And I'm just like, what kind of role are these gun using fish heads really going to have? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to say right now. I mean, apparently they have the Red Ribbon Army patch on their arms. So, you know, they're probably aligned with the Red Ribbon Army. And that kind of makes me wonder because it's just like, dude, the Red Ribbon, the reason why we don't ever really see the Red Ribbon Army is because they weren't like, like if they were to show up now, they would get washed. Like, <laughs> like they, they wouldn't do anything. The reason I'm not excited at all is because the way that they're, the, the way that they've been promoting this movie, the things they've said, the things they've shown, the teasers, the trailers, the pictures, the panels, all of it, right? No matter who comes in this movie on the antagonist side, they cannot step to none of the current Saiyans. Yep, they're not. Like, they're not even... Dude, they're not even stepping up to the kids. They're not. They're not even stepping up to the kids. So, like, why? There has to... Please, please, Dragon Ball. I know, I know it's just Dragon Ball. There really doesn't have to be a reason. Y'all can do whatever the fuck you want and make money. But please let there be a reason. <laughs> please let it make sense. I know I'm asking way too much for Dragon Ball to make sense out here. But please let there be a reason. Yeah. Please, 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 please. We beg you. But um, other than that, there are um, a couple things uh, outside of all of our speculation and diving into what we have here um about this movie um is there was there was a few questions that they pulled from the panel um and i'm reading off this off of the the of konzenshu so if you guys don't know what konzenshu.com is i mean are you really a dragon ball fan but anyway here we go um a couple things i wanted to point out here is that uh some obvious i mean these are pretty basic questions like they ask like does the dragon ball super anime connect to uh, with the story uh, with the last chapter of the manga but what about the movie is it a continuation of the of the end of the manga and they reiterate of course i'm sure everyone kind of figured this out on their own they're saying that um since the events of dragon ball super take place within the 10 years after goku defeats majin Buu, and since toriyama wrote the story himself it naturally connects to the story of dragon ball so yes this movie is quote-unquote canon for all you freaking lovely fans out there that just love to be all up in your canon this and canon that okay there you go guys like not for nothing all all the people out there that really don't like canon material y'all gotta understand that not just in dragon ball but in anime in general there's a lot of non-canon material that is absolute fire absolutely as long as it's done right exactly like you know, the, you have to appreciate it for what it is. Um, like, right now, I'm getting to the point where I wish, if they're going to keep going with Dragon Ball Super, I wish the rest of it would be non-canon, because the canon is hurting me right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. I feel that. Um, and so then, they, the, the second question they ask is, could you tell us what period this movie is set? After the Granola arc, but before the 20th Tenkai, Tenkaichi Budokai. And Akira Yoku notes he cannot speak to what is unfolding in the Granola story arc as it is still ongoing and he does not want to spoil anything. However, he will say that the events of the new movie will take place after the events in Dragon Ball Super Broly, but before the 20th Tenkaichi Budokai. So, like, it's clear as day, guys. Pan is literally not an infant anymore. It's gonna happen like right before that tournament. And they literally said it right there. It happens right before the tournament. So I'm sure at some point in the film, we will see that tournament happen. And that movie can tie the, the end of this 10 year gap. And we'll, we'll have Oob in there. At, I'm sure he'll have be at the end or if it's an after credit, I don't care. It's happening in this film. Oh no, wait, this would make Broly the unexpected character we've been thinking about, though. Do you think so? Dude, who the fuck was expecting Broly in a filler movie? Yo, this man is so disrespectful. 
calling it a filler movie. What the fuck you want me to call it? Oh, the Red Ribbon Army. Get out of here. We have Ultra Instinct in this bitch. Red Ribbon uh, Army. Uh, Yo, you know what's crazy? We have yet to see a film with Ultra Instinct not when it's pooped out for two seconds on screen but like <laughs> that, that, like yo, that we, was disrespectful what they did there yo and they had the balls to really call it like uh like they they i forget what exactly they called it but it was like an artistic or an artistic choice i'm like nah nah nah, nah you, that, the, you can't no. fucking play with colors a color palette in a in a show like dragon ball okay you can't do that you can't yeah, so, got yeah, three yeah, yeah, okay, okay, ones. okay. So you're telling me that it was an artistic choice to make Vegeta's hair go green when he was trying to go, you know, Super Saiyan God red? Facts. Like, I don't want to hear that shit. Like, nah. Li listen, the fact that we had green hair for a little bit. For Hey, look, Goku had the green aura too, mm -hmm. okay? I don't want to I don't want to hear none of, none of this mess about, oh, artistic choices. Get the fuck out of here. Listen here. You you can't do that in this in this in this series. Okay, you can't because you we are we are already exploring the colors of the rainbow, very much so. Okay. Golden yellow, right, is Super Saiyan. We've known that for so long. Now we got red with Super Saiyan God. Blue is Super Saiyan Blue, duh, right? And then Ultra Instinct the Omen went back to the original black, where the mastered is white. Okay. And you know what? You know, what? I just want to throw in there real quick. I just thought of this out of nowhere, but you know what would make Ultra Instinct's uh, a a aesthetic look a lot cooler? What? He could keep the white jaw, all that, right? But if the aura, if the aura was omnicolor, so it had like, you know, all those colors, just hints of them just like going off. I mean that's kind of what it is already. Like it's like rainbowy. It's like it's like a lot of it's like a it's like a blend. Of, like, I don't a see it like that though. I don't see them using it like that. Like I know that like I, I don't know how to describe it, but just having the form be more like that would really showcase, you know, perfection. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, you know, he, give him the whole color palette. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, and like, and here's the thing, right? I mean, I I, I like to quickly turn this rant or this this tangent into like the, a, a purposeful little tangent right because you know vegeta went green for a second right but yeah. listen dude who who literally had green for the majority of a time broly bro literally the original one the classic legendary broly from the first three freaking dragon ball z films that he had back in the Diz. okay his super saiyan was like a was a tinted green bro and then here comes Vegeta popping it. Here comes Goku with the aura color. Like, it's like, you can't do that. You just can't do that, right? So, when it comes to this movie, I don't know if, if Broly actually ends up being like that surprise character. Um, because I'll tell you what, if he ends up being, if they, if they really book him to be the surprise character and he only is there for my predictions worth, Oh, that's gonna piss people off. That's gonna piss me, piss me off for sure. Cause sure, would I love Broly to have more of a prominent role in this film and do something of of, of some sort of value? But dude, it, this movie, like you said, is is very like fillery kind of type. You know, this is the kind of stuff where you know when they was doing the the the, the non substance episodes in Dragon Ball Super, where it was like they had the Great Sandman episodes. Bro, I'm telling you. If we get Great Sandman in this movie, I'm gonna be hype. But I'm sure a lot of people are not gonna be. That would be me. <laughs> there you go. So perfect blend. Perfect blend. Um, the other things that they said here for this panel, they ask about the release dates, which Spark notes there really is no release date yet. They just know that. Um, there's there's still no definitive date even for the Japan lease. Nah, dude, release date December 2022. Stop, stop. I hope it's spring. I really hope it's spring. <laughs> Get they really the fuck out of here, spring. Oh my god. Yo, you reaching? Uh, well, only one can hope, right? I mean that that is what it is to be a fan of Dragon Ball, right? All we do is hope for things. Um, but they also uh. 
They also go on to mention that they're, that they're still in negotiations for the movie's US release. So they would like them to release as close to this, uh, the same time as possible. They will let us know as soon as they can about its official release date. So right there, that to me sounds like we're going to be in the same exact situation as the Broly situation where Japan is going to have it a month out and we'll have it the following month because yeah. they got it officially in December of 2018 and we got it December 29th or no, I'm sorry uh, January 2019 uh -huh. a month after but it was still a 2018 movie release right yeah so you know yeah. what that means <laughs> that fuck <laughs> uh man it is what it is welcome welcome new Dragon Ball fans how may I disappoint you today yo but you know what's crazy is that I mean, look, we we can we can consider ourselves a little lucky, though. I'm not gonna lie, because the rest of the world they had to wait a long time just nah, to see it in theaters. You're right. You're right. Definitely, there's definitely that USA privilege when it comes to releases and stuff like that. Absolutely, because we as fans, we fucking go crazy if we don't get shit. Like, like we demand things, we riot over things. <laughs> like, we're we're literally like America's the teenagers all about of the their world. entertainment. Yes, we don't fuck around with that with, with that shit. Like yeah. we absolutely need our we need our things. Yeah. To everybody else, you know, having it is nice. It's cool. It's like, oh yeah, I want it. Oh yeah, I need it now. But America's like, no, this is our lifestyle. This is our way of living. You don't give us our entertainment, we'll fuck you up. Yeah. Yeah. The last question here is actually kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie that they they that they would even bother to ask this oh God. but you know what it's 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 fine it's all good and fun all you right, know it's a, it. it's a it's a comic-con panel no less you know it is what it is question number four i'd love to know the address for piccolo's house i'll send him a letter <laughs> see it's funny right you know you laugh and uh ayoku says that while piccolo's house does indeed have a mailbox in the movie its exact address is unknown oh <laughs> surprise you know? surprise you're right you're right I'd love to see the mailman that actually delivers shit to Piccolo. Like, imagine Piccolo with bills. Like, what the fuck? Like, that, that, come on, shut up. Like, get a. I want. I want to no see one, Super Namekians. Yo, no one on the Z Fighters squad deserves to have bills in their life. That's true. None like, of for them. real. Not even and Yamcha. Like, not even Yamcha, man. Man, my man already had the freaking. He already had. A loss from Magic Carp, okay? Like there's no there's no coming back from that. Okay? My man went through with the worst. Okay. How do you, how you gonna how you gonna be with, with somebody, right? And then that same girl ends up with the same bro. And then you get mopped by said same. Like that's crazy. And then she delivers children to this dude. Man, Yamcha holding all the L's, okay guys? So yeah. Everybody's That's why better they be made on Vegeta some pain. hold the L's. No, shut up. That's not why. Yeah, it has nothing to do with Yamcha. Oh, Get the right. hell out of it. Yeah, man. Listen. But yeah, no, no, not a single person in the Z Fighter Squad should be freaking having to lift a finger. They really should. To, to, to get any kind of money. Like, Hercule should... They should be on Hercule's payroll for just existing. This man just sends them cash. Okay, that's how it should be. Yep. But um, but yeah, guys, that's kind of it. I mean, that's that's pretty much we somehow managed to stretch this episode out to about an hour, like usual. Um, surprisingly, I thought we were not we weren't gonna make it to to that that time that usual time allotment um, that we usually do. But hey, I mean, full power podcast. We're full power out of control, and uh, yeah, pretty soon uh, we actually will be talking about other things that are not just dragon ball we are kind of gonna we're gonna open this up to being more of a anime manga kind of podcast because there's a lot of things that go full power and out of control but you know we're still gonna keep that dragon ball broly theme to this podcast you know at at, a, at its core it will you know always be a, a dragon ball oh, yeah. um, type podcast so is there anything else you want to Mention Kai, anything you're looking forward to with Dragon Ball? Anything you want to ask the fans that are, are uh, following us here? 
No, I kind of I have my little message in with the fans written in, you know, leaving comments about trying to change our opinions if they don't like them and stuff like that. Because, you know, we always go through the comments and we have changed our opinions before. So definitely do that. If you don't like some shit we said or you do like it, you know, just let us know. Uh, you might be you might be surprised. We, we get be. surprised all the time. So, I mean, that's cool stuff. But other than that, you definitely wrapped it up quite nicely. Dope. All right. Well, with that being said, guys, keep keep it locked loaded right here with the full power podcast make sure you guys are following the social media and keeping in in tune with anything that we got going on on the side of course i know i've been streaming like i try to stream at least every day and uh yeah we got a lot a lot of, a lot of cool things happening I, I i'm running tournaments again every friday online of course because you know pandemic is still kicking and uh <laughs> we out here so oh, leave a like <laughs> right the whole america that's the best way to put it so leave a like uh leave your comments and if you're listening on spotify make sure you guys are uh taking advantage of the poll uh questions because there's actually a way for you guys that are listening on spotify to actually interact with us where so you don't have to actually be on the youtube version to leave a comment or you know you could always email us at fullpowerpod at gmail.com with any kind of questions, topic, discussions that you guys want us to uh, talk about on future episodes, then that's always open to you guys. Again, that's fullpowerpod at gmail.com. It's been your boy, Ooch, with the homie Kai, and we will see y'all next time.